Hello everybody, it's me, your good friend Sparky, and welcome back to the Wii version of Pikmin on day number two. My dolphin has returned to the surface along with the Pikmin's onion. Being alone on the strange planet makes me somewhat uneasy, so I shall call the Pikmin out of the onion. All I need to do is stand beneath the light and press A. That's all it takes to bring our little army to our side. But this little army will not stay little for long because we are going to be doing a lot, a lot of Pikmin growing today. But to do that, that kind of requires, uh, you know, knocking down that gate and getting out of the starting area. So that is our first task. And while Olimar is uh, doing this sort of tasks, I can talk a little bit about the Wii version, and how one sort of advantage of the Wii version that I don't think normally a lot of people would think about is the fact that it's in widescreen, just naturally. You have, a, like, a wider viewing area to work with, and it lets you get a better grasp on your surroundings. It's the sort of thing, by just playing the GameCube and the Wii version back-to-back -back like this, I didn't really think about, but just the fact that you can see more of the screen at once, it does help out sometimes. It gives you, it lets you get your bearings a little more on your surroundings and what's going on in the area. It's the sort of thing that you don't really consider, and uh, you might take for granted, honestly. Hello, what's this? Another intriguing discovery! A local variety of grass produces a sort of yellow nectar. When the Pikmin drink this delicacy, they instantly mature into flowers. This apparent Pikmin favorite seems to be full of nutrition. Closer observation is needed to determine the strengths and peculiarities of these flower Pikmin. The only really strength the flower Pikmin is the fact that they do move faster. But the fact that they move faster does come uh, very much in handy. We're going to need a lot of flower Pikmin in order to get things done quickly like carrying back ship parts. Why? It's the Eternal Fuel Dynamo! It has an unlimited energy supply. I won't have to worry about saving electricity anymore. This will make my fight for survival a bit easier. Of course, we can't really carry it back just yet. Uh, that's because it's a little too heavy, and we need more Pikmin or in order to accomplish that goal. Thankfully, there are plenty of things lying about for us to carry back to the Onion, including these small creatures that we just murdered. And hey, there's more over there, too. One detail about battling enemies in Pikmin is if you're fighting a small enemy, throwing a Pikmin uh, on top of them and getting sort of a perfect landing, a perfect shot, uh, does allow you to instantly knock out some enemies. Some small enemies, I should clarify. It only works on the little guys. If you try to toss too many enemies at a big bulb orb or something, it probably won't go very well for you. That being said, not all small enemies can be taken out instantaneously either. So, sometimes it's just really more worth it to do a swarm and uh, swarm your enemy and just make sure they can't escape from your wrath. It just typically ends up being a little more of an effective strategy to do the swarm sometimes. Which, it's something I probably should bring up that... Uh, keen observers of the video might find odd or might be picking up on is that when I do the swarm and other certain actions, the sound effects for those actions are not playing. When I'm directing Pikmin, when I'm uh, dismissing them, that's because certain sound effects uh, on the Wii version, they play through the Wii remote. The Wii Remote's got a little speaker on it that certain games use to sort of enhance the mood, enhance the experience. And, uh, yeah, I didn't really think about that at first. So the, for the first few days of the Wii version, 
certain sound effects like the charging, swarming, directing Pikmin maneuver, they're gonna be missing. I think it's around day four that I realized this was happening. Because if it's playing through the Wii Remote, it's not going to be playing in the game. You have to turn the Wii Remote volume all the way down to get the sound effects to actually play in the game itself. So, there's gonna be certain voids of sound that you aren't going to be hearing. So, if it's distracting at all on the Wii videos for a little while, I apologize, but I do fix it. I do fix it. That's the important thing to know. Speaking of weirdness, though, you might have noticed that uh, my counter down there was kind of glitched out. It said I had a Pikmin when I didn't. That happens a lot in Pikmin 1, where it'll say that you've got a Pikmin and you don't, or there's 101 or 100, even 102 Pikmin on the field sometimes, which technically isn't possible. Speaking of Pikmin, though, we did just find the yellow onion and it did produce a seed, which uh, is someone very special that I need to introduce you guys to. We'll talk to him in a minute. But uh, we gotta send our red Pikmin out to start carrying things back, get that ship part back to where it belongs. But while they're doing that, we get to meet this guy. Everybody, this is Clyde. The color is different, but it seems to be a Pikmin nonetheless. First glance suggests that this one has in what some circles could be considered very large ears. It looks like it may weigh less than the others. In what other ways may it be different from Red Pikmin? I must be sure to observe them closely. I will hold a Pikmin for a moment with A and swap it to another by pressing B. Yeah, that's actually a really important detail. That is a control option that is not in the GameCube version. It's a feature that was introduced in Pikmin 2 on GameCube, but... Oh, hello there. Almost forgot about this. Eternal Fuel Dynamo! This should light things up. No more candles for me. I have now recovered two of 30 parts. If I can just f find three more, I should be able to increase my ship's capabilities. But yeah, that control detail, when you're holding Pikmin and pressing B, you can swap to a different color, that's not in the GameCube version. And that is something that I had completely forgotten wasn't in the GameCube version. And I was really confused when I couldn't quick swap my Pikmin in the GameCube version. It's something that was introduced sort of retroactively into this version of the game. And it really helps. Basically, how it works is when you have a group of multiple colors of Pikmin. Like, say I had some red Pikmin with me. Oh, hold on. My clock has indicated the coming of noon. From now on, I must pay close attention to the sun meter and my monitor to choose my actions accordingly. So it is best for me to review my monitor's data. Across the top of my monitor are the sun meter and day display. At the bottom are my space shoot damage meter and Pikmin gauges. From left, these numbers reflect Pikmin under my command, Pikmin in the field, and total Pikmin, including those in the onions. To adjust my monitor, I can press Z to rotate my camera, left to right on the D-pad to zoom, up to change my viewpoint, and also press plus to view a detailed computer analysis. But yeah, if I had both red and yellow Pikmin right now, uh, when holding a Pikmin, I would be able to press the B button and quick swap to the other Pikmin. And that would automatically sort of re-sort the Pikmin following behind me and things like that. It's really, really handy for effectively doing things in this game, and I really miss it in the GameCube version. I have made yet another Pikmin-related discovery. Just when I was about to exceed 100 Pikmin in the field, the onions stopped expelling seeds, yet the total number of Pikmin continued to climb. It seems that once there are 100 Pikmin in the field, subsequent seeds get stored inside the onion. Thus, no more than 100 Pikmin can be in the field at any one time in any area. Yeah, uh, day two is kind of full of little messages like that. Almost makes me wish this was another tutorial day, 
For example, here's another one. The yellow Pikmin have picked up some peculiar stones. Why did they decide to grab them? This action seems to be instinctive to the yellow Pikmin. But just what are these strange glowing stones? Brightly glowing cracks cover them. Perhaps these cracks indicate there's tremendous power locked within. This merits further research. Yeah, Olimar's got a lot to say on day two. There's a lot of things that end up getting like picked up on and talked about to sort of teach the player what's going on. And again, it it, it does make me kind of wish that day two was a just a second tutorial day without a time limit in order to like get all this information out. But I can see why they wouldn't want to do two of those in a row because yeah, it would be a little distracting, I guess, and kind of just, like, wouldn't get across the message of what the game is supposed to be like, I guess. But still, there's a lot, a lot of information that gets said on day two that you've got to process, in addition to learning how to fight enemies and... Uh, finding the yellow onion and things like that. It's just, there's a lot of info. There's a lot of things to process on day two. And all of the messages popping up really don't help when you're trying to do things very quickly and effectively. I never even really mentioned what the goal for day two here is. We need to find four ship parts and we've only got one so far. Oh, hey, another message. The glowing rocks the yellow Pikmin picked up seem to be explosive stones. Perhaps they know that these stones can be used as powerful weapons. The bomb rocks are dangerous, so I must take care when using them. But they should be able to blast open the stone walls that block pathways. I may even be able to use them against some of the wild creatures. I must be vigilant. When I throw a bomb rock carrying Pikmin and give them orders, they will toss their bomb rocks at ne nearby walls or obstacles. The explosive power of these bomb rocks is tremendous, so I must keep my distance. And that's actually something else that's really important to note. Um, the way that Bomb Rocks work in the GameCube version and the way that Bomb Rocks work in the Wii version is different. In the GameCube version, uh, whether you dismiss Pikmin into groups or, um, or throw the Pikmin, that's the other thing you do with Pikmin, you dismiss them or throw them. Depending on if you dismiss them or throw a Pikmin, the way that they handle bomb rocks changes. By just throwing Pikmin, uh, they would target whatever was near them and like throw their bombs or place them and then run away. But if you throw them and there's nothing to target, it kind of like arms them in the GameCube version. Meaning that when you whistle for them, they'll just drop their bomb rocks and they'll start to explode. That is not the case in the Wii version. They no longer do that. And that's another detail of the GameCube version that I completely had forgotten about. Boy, that one Bulborb just took out 21 Pikmin. You don't want to attack Bulborbs from the side. I found the Nova Blaster! This emits a dazzling burst of light capable of destroying almost anything. I'm not exactly sure about this, but the promotional brochure claims its blasts travel through the currents of space-time, smashing through stars and into the rifts of space. Yeah, uh, trying to attack a Bulborb from the side uh, it usually doesn't go well. You want to try and attack them from behind, but it can be difficult to do that in sort of close quarters like this, so that ended up not going very well. That and there's a weird glitch you need to pay attention to in Pikmin 1, which unfortunately was not something that was resolved in the Wii version, and that is if a collapsing enemy in defeat falls on top of your Pikmin, it can actually cause a bug, sort of, where they'll actually push the Pikmin through the geometry of the map, and it kills them, basically. I've heard it as referred... 
I, I've heard it referred to as the crushing glitch, and it's certainly appropriately named in that case, because it does basically crush your Pikmin and and end up killing them. Oh hey look, something arrived back to camp. Nova Blaster. This weapon is of such incredible destructive force that it can blast stars into tiny pieces. That's a strange allure. I have now recovered three of 30 parts. If I can just find two more, I should be able to increase my ship's capabilities. And yeah, there's gonna be a lot of uh, more messages kind of popping up right now. Because uh, the end of the day here gets kind of chaotic. Uh, for example, there's another ship part back there, and another one just went behind us. <laughs> It's the Extraordinary Bolt! I bought this incredible bolt because the salesman told me of its extraordinary quality that is indiscernible to the average person. Exactly what makes it so extraordinary is a secret, but just look at it. Extraordinary. <laughs> yeah, Almar's kind of a clueless doofus in some cases. Uh, it does make him very endearing, though. I think that's what's cool about Almar is that he's not, like, really a super-powered person. He's just kind of an ordinary guy. It's my whimsical radar! With this, I'll be able to see all the nearby ship parts with a single glance. I just need to press plus to check it. Whimsical radar is definitely one of the more important parts that you will find in the game, because it's one of the only parts that actually, like, gives you an additional function, really. Whimsical Radar! This important part can detect the locations of other missing parts. The radar will be added to my monitor, which I can press plus to view. Up or down zooms in and out. This will surely help me in my search for the remaining parts. I have now recovered four of 30 parts. If I can just find one more, I should be able to increase my ship's capabilities. Yeah, we're kind of cutting it close because it's sundown now. My clock is indicating the approach of sunset. Pikmin waiting beneath the dolphin and onions will probably enter their onions on their own, but if I don't call to the stragglers and add them to my group, they might not be able to get back. I am sure that Pikmin still planted are safe, but I am somewhat concerned about leaving Pikmin to fend for themselves in the darkness. And basically what that means is that if you don't have a Pikmin either with you in your command or nearby the dolphin and the onions, uh... And they get left behind at the end of the day, and they kind of get eaten by nocturnal predators, which is no fun. No fun for anyone. Except for the nocturnal predators, I guess. I'm sure they are very happy when you leave Pikmin behind. And here is another, as the day counts down to the end, here's another trick that you can do uh, that you can't do in the GameCube version that is really all associated with Olimar's extended reach, you can knock down a gate up there that otherwise you'd need to get on a different day. And uh, knocking that, that gate ahead of time will save us time in the future. Extraordinary Bolt. This bolt's bolt holds the kind of value only a true connoisseur can understand. I have recovered five of 30 parts, increasing the dolphin's capabilities. My search can now cover a wider area. Counting down in the last seconds of the day, we do accomplish our goal of getting four parts in one day. It's very tight timing, but we actually did manage to accomplish this faster in the Wii version than in the GameCube version. If you haven't watched the GameCube version video yet, I suggest you do, because you'll understand what I'm talking about. But that officially brings day two on the Wii version of Pikmin to a close. And by the way, if you're also wondering more about Clyde, uh, I suggest also watching the Day 2 GameCube video. I do go into more details on the wondrous world of Clyde there. Trust me, Clyde is a very important person. Or very important Pikmin, in this case. And surprisingly, in all that chaos, we managed not to leave any Pikmin behind. Which is very nice. Two days since impact. It appears that many of my ship's parts have landed in this region. If I can just recover the parts of my radar, I should be able to use my radar screen. How would I improve- how that would improve my chances? I'd only have to press plus to locate my parts. Well, good news, Olimar, you already did that. 
Yet, there seem to be many hostile life forms here. If I am attacked and my spaceship is damaged, I must return to my ship, stand in front of it, and press A to make suit repairs. I ex as I explore, I must pay attention to my suit's damage meter in the bottom left corner of the screen. Yes, Olimar does have a set amount of health, so it's important to pay attention to that. And here are our Pikmin population results for the day. We sprouted 117 Pikmin, lost 23 in battle, and thankfully left no, none, no Pikmin behind at sunset. We accomplished our goal of getting four ship parts in one day, and I'd say that is pretty successful. Success shaped. Yeah. But anyway, that's going to call it for right now. Thank you very much for watching. This is your good friend Sparky, signing off for now. I'll catch you later.